Thank you. I'm Tom Carpenter. I'm at Yale University at the Yale Center for X-Linked Hypophosphatemia. Uh, joining me today is Dr. Carl and Sonia. He and I direct the uh, center here, and we've encountered a number of people over the past uh, uh, several months to year uh, that have been asking us uh, about the uh, COVID vaccine and uh, its place in the treatment of uh, its place in the in the context of excellent type of phosphatemia. We've agreed to speak on behalf uh, of the XLH network uh, as they have uh, requested uh, information that may be of use to the patient population that are, are affected. I am um, going to turn this over to Dr. and Sonia, who is going to tell us a little bit about uh, vaccine background and the COVID vaccine in particular. Just wanted to mention the fact that uh, both Tom and I routinely wear masks whenever we're seeing patients and wherever in the hospital, particularly in view of the Delta variant, although we're both fully vaccinated, it's our practice and preference to keep the masks on. We're just taking them off briefly to speak to you because some of you may have difficulty hearing us with the masks on. So um, I don't need to tell you that vaccines are safe and effective. Um, you and your children have been vaccinated against smallpox, measles, mumps, those diseases generations ago were scourges that killed thousands of people, made people deaf, made people infertile. And that's all been changed by the development of vaccines. We cured smallpox with a vaccine. So COVID-19 uh, and the disease, the disease COVID-19 caused by SARS-CoV-2 is just another virus, but it's a new one. And this vaccine that we've developed is not different fundamentally except that we have now advanced science to the point where we can now give your body the template to make just a tiny piece of that vi virus, but it's a critical piece of that virus so that your body knows when that virus infects, it recognizes it and kills it. That tiny template is not the virus. You can't get COVID-19 from that template. It doesn't stick around forever. It doesn't change your DNA. There's nothing else in that shot but that template and the liquid that carries it. So this notion that there's some weird stuff in there has no basis in fact. So I would like to mention uh, a little bit about the specifics of children getting the vaccine, um, particularly with the, in the context of X-linked hypophosphatemia. Um, so as uh, Dr. and Sonia mentioned, this vaccine allows the body to recognize the real virus, should you encounter it, and it primes the body to be able to respond in a way to go after that virus and destroy it, which is essentially an inflammatory reaction. So the side effects we see of the vaccine specifically have to do with that inflammatory reaction that occurs that's really helping you to be able to respond should you encounter the bug. The uh, things we're seeing in children are uh, soreness uh, after the shot. Uh, also, if you're getting burosumab, sometimes the injection site will have a reaction such as uh, uh, hives or soreness. Uh, even if it was a different area than where you got the vaccine, sometimes the injection site for the burosumab can be a little stingy after the shot. These are all transient and really telling you that the vaccine is working. Um, there have been some reports of inflammation of the heart muscle and the sac that the heart resides in uh, after COVID uh, vaccines. Uh, this actually occurs in the context of getting the virus itself and in fact is more common and more severe when you get the disease rather than the vaccine. So it in fact is protective against what you might otherwise be getting. These, these are actually all fairly rare complications of both the vaccine and the, and the disease. Um, I think those have been the major concerns, otherwise it's been extremely safe in children. In adults uh, with XLH, um, the same inflammatory response is seen um, and the same sort of precautions in adults who get the vaccine, uh, who don't patients get a low-grade fever, and I've had some patients have a 
an exuberant reaction to their next berosumab shot, but then no subsequent problems. In terms of the specifics of XLH in adults, there's been suggestions that low blood phosphorus or low blood vitamin D are associated with worse outcomes. The data are not compelling. Neither Tom nor I find those data very convincing. But what is important is that there are known risk factors for worse outcomes, and those include obesity and type 2 diabetes. And unfortunately, because many patients with XLH can exercise, those two conditions are prevalent among patients with XLH. So those conditions definitely put people at increased risk for severe complications. And finally, because uh, some people with XLH have relatively short upper bodies, uh, their respiratory reserve is somewhat compromised, and that too could represent a risk factor. So all those things make it more compelling in patients with XLH to get the vaccine than even among uh, adults in the general population, as if the Delta variant wasn't a reason enough. Finally, the issue of pregnancy has been one that many people have approached me on. Here too, the data are very clear. There have been a number of large studies that show that it's perfectly safe for a pregnant woman to get the vaccine, but women who are unvaccinated and are pregnant are at greater risk for severe complications. And Tom, is there any evidence to suggest that the newborn of a mother who's vaccinated has a problem? That's not been an issue at, at all. It's, it appears to be very safe in uh, the unborn child um, as well as in the, the pregnant mother. And finally, to the issue of who you can trust, um, that, that's not something we have time to cover today. I think Tom and I rely on what comes out of the FDA and the CDC. Um, and I think those individuals uh, have a, a strong scientific background, critical reviews of the, the literature and the science, and have nothing but the public's best interests in mind. So we hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for listening.